Hello and welcome to Dr. Brainwaves. I'm Dr. Susan Rochelle and this is Dr. Rena Azar. Today we're going to talk about vaginal discharge. Now there's something that is very interesting about vaginal discharge and that is that we all have it and, and it comes in different volumes and also it's not that uncommon to have a vaginal discharge. Lots of warm dark places will have discharge. For an example, you have about 600 cc's or ml's of drainage in the back of your throat. Well, that is very, very common. The times that you notice is when you have an increase in that, those secretions, or if it gets really thick, then it becomes more perceptible. Vaginal discharge is very similar, that you may have a small amount of discharge, don't even notice it because it can get absorbed in your underwear, but if there is an, a lot of it, or it's discolored, or if it has a smell to it that is not normal for you, you may want to have it checked out. Dr. Azar is going to tell us what vaginal discharge is, what things to expect, how it should be diagnosed, when you need to bring it to her attention, and then what are some available treatments out there for it. So vaginal discharge is a liquidy substance made in the vaginal area. We all have glands in our vaginal area. It is mucosal, just like the nose and the mouth. The vaginal area is mucosal. So there are little glands that secrete substances, mostly liquid and mucus type substances into the vaginal area. Plus we have a biome in there. Remember to watch our biome video. We have a little little mecca of different microorganisms living in the vaginal area in harmony, but they make some secretions too. And when they, when they grow a little bit too abundantly, then we get abnormal discharge. That's what, it, that's what causes an abnormal discharge when you have an infection. But the point is we all have about one to four milliliters of discharge a day How from the vaginal that? area. It's like a yes. teaspoon. There like we a go. Teaspoon. Mm -hmm. And it's typically transparent which is why oftentimes people don't notice it. It can be mucusy or viscous, um, and it can be whitish or yellowish, occasionally even grayish. But some discharge is very, very normal. So the question is, when do you bring it to your doctor? Well, the whole point of bringing things to the doctor is either it's annoying to you or there may be something wrong. It's annoying to you comes down to you. If you have a lot of it uh, or it's sticky uh, or it's itchy or burny, bring it to your doctor so we can evaluate it. Um, I've even done some hormonal manipulation in people to try to decrease uh, excessive vaginal discharge because some people make more than others and they might find that just personally problematic. Uh, on the other hand, vaginal, vaginal discharge can also be a sign that you have an underlying infection. Mm -hmm. That could be anything from an infection like a sexually transmitted disease like gonorrhea or chlamydia, or it could also be simply an overgrowth of something that's already in the vagina, in the biome. People don't like to hear that, but we have a lot of little happy microbes living in the vaginal area in modest quantities. But if one overgrows, then it can cause an infection because now it is pathologic. It is not normal to be that high a level in the vaginal area. And now you will get a discharge that changes. Is this a good time to talk about yeast infections and why they occur? because that biome becomes out of balance. Mm -hmm. Exactly, so for one example, if you take an antibiotic, what's gonna happen? You have a nice little balance of, of a couple different microbes would be fungi and bacteria, and you kill the bacteria and now the fungi take over. So that's why it's important to keep a harmony. We'll come back to that concept in just a minute. So infections are overgrowth of bacteria or introduction of bacteria from somewhere else, like an STD, can cause an infection in the vaginal area. In addition to that, if you have raw surfaces in the vagina, what do raw surfaces come from? Well, they come from sometimes an infection causing erosion or, um, or de degradation of the surface cells, but it can also come from an underlying condition. There's a condition called lichen sclerosis, erosivus. There's also a condition called Bichette's disease. And both of these are examples of underlying conditions that can lead to raw surface areas and they become seepy. And that will give you a discharge. And sometimes the Bichette's disease, you will have vesicles, or I think you referred to them before as bubbles. Mm -hmm. So typically if you see that, um, that may be, that's something that should be brought to the attention of your gynecologist, your primary care doctor, because it could be something that can be treated or should be treated. Mm -hmm. Likewise, if you have a malignancy or cancer mm -hmm. in your vaginal area, 
it can cause an erosion or open ulcerated surface. And that as well will become seepy and give you a discharge. And finally, I like to mention, this is more true in children, but foreign bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, for, sometimes children get a little curious and stick something in the vaginal area. Uh, although one needs to make sure to consider sexual abuse in this kind of situation. But sometimes children just do that because they're curious. And likewise, I'll see women that will have a retained tampon, something they put in there and they've forgotten it does happen. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it is, I've definitely seen it quite a bit in my career. So what happens is that that discharge will now have an odor and become more copious. So things that will be a sign that you may have something wrong that you need to go see your provider for include odor, uh, or an increase in the amount of discharge or an increase, a, a change in the nature of your discharge. Right. Um, and uh, if it has accompanying symptoms like itchiness, pelvic pain, pain with intercourse. I want to mention two other normal underlying physiologic conditions can also have an impact on discharge. For example, pregnancy often has associated increased amounts of vaginal secretions because the whole vaginal, you know, uterine, the whole female part area is very pumped up, has a, a lot of activity, and that can include increased glandular activity. On the other hand, in menopause, atrophy or thinning of those tissues can occur, and then the cells become less active, so a natural dryness can occur, even an associated rawness, once and again, giving open surface areas and increasing seepage. And I was thinking, because I have had patients that came in because they did have a lot of rawness and irritation, and it turned out that they had a latex allergy. And it wasn't because they were putting anything into their uh, vagina, except that their partner was wearing a condom. Mm -hmm. And the condoms, many of the condoms are made of latex, because latex is a very, is an excellent impenetrable barrier, so it doesn't allow for sexually transmitted diseases to get past that barrier, that rubber on there. Um, and, and then the other thing that I have found commonly is um, in women who have, again, irritation in their vagina, it may be because they were soaking in bubble baths and it was the fragrance mix or something in the product that they were using in the tub was irritating and caused them to have a type of dermatitis or an inflammation in that mm -hmm. tissue. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So once again, another underlying condition that mm -hmm. can lead right. to raw areas in the vaginal area. Uh, so... What we're wanting to do is have you come in if you notice changes like that or associated symptoms, like I mentioned, pain, pain with intercourse, um, irregular bleeding, itching, because we don't want to miss, miss cancer. Uh, we, that's a big bad boy we don't want to miss. We don't want to miss infections. Some STDs are really important to catch, mostly because they can go up into the pelvic area further. So they go from the vagina into the cervix, into the uterus, and up into the tubes. And I have another video on pelvic inflammatory disease. That's what I'm referring to here. That is something we don't want to miss. So if you have an abnormal uh, symptoms and abnormal discharge, bring that in so we can make sure that you don't have an infection that can mm -hmm. cause serious damage that can lend itself to infertility in the future. So we want to make sure we discover uh, the cancers, uh, damaging infections, Tumors that can grow even if they're not cancerous and other underlying health issues uh, such as severe allergies, uh, Bichette's disease, mm -hmm. uh, etc. So that's why we want you to come in and those are the symptoms that you would notice if you need to come in. Treatment will be eradication of the underlying problem or elimination of the exposure that causes problems. Mm -hmm. And then also I like to really emphasize with people whenever we treat somebody, particularly if they are resistant, we look at the underlying health of the tissue. So I'm going to come to another topic and we'll go back to that. Uh, and that is some people will come in and have recurrent infections. When you have a recurrent infection, the question is, was it not treated adequately? In other words, you didn't have enough medication or treatment to get rid of this the problem. Um, is it resistant in terms of bacteria, uh, viruses, etc.? We see development of resistance to our treatments. So we have to evaluate, is it a resistant strain of infection? Um, and then the third problem that we want to evaluate is the bad environment or poor health of the vaginal area. So once again, oftentimes treatment is augmented, improved, 
uh, by making sure that we are uh, we are making that vaginal biome healthy, which we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. um, but that will improve the overall health of that person and help to decrease recurrences, improve responses to the source of the vaginal discharge that is problematic. So I have another video on improving the health of the vagina, and I hope you look at that too.